Hey there, welcome to Trial and Eric, episode number 14. Here I am in Los Angeles, California, which is nothing like Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is where I live. But uh, I came out here to do a little bit of recording that I was supposed to do early in the month, so meeting with some people and playing a show on Tuesday, and I got to meet some very interesting people. I'll tell you all about it. But first, I'm going to say... Hello to everybody. I know you're watching a football game right now. I don't really know much about football, to tell you the truth. I didn't even realize that there was the biggest football game that was going to occur today, or else maybe I would have made this a little bit later. But we're at the, what is it, the, I'm going four minutes, two minutes, 34 to 29, Ravens, 49ers. So, while that's all going on, I'm going to make you some Italian quesadillas. Italian quesadillas comes from my hesitancy to eat Mexican food, which I'm going to announce right now. I've never been a big fan of Mexican food. Um, I don't know why that is. Just maybe it's cheddar cheese. I don't know. There's just stuff that I, and beans, I've just never been a fan of it. But a few weeks ago, a friend of mine, Robin, who's awesome, she ended up making me quesadillas using uh, Monterey Jack and some good chicken. And the first time I ever had it, I loved it. So I'm gonna make my little spin on it, making it a little more Italian. So we got our red onion, we got our tomato, we got a cut up yellow bell pepper, and choices of cheese, this is where it gets a little Italian. We have our mozzarella and some shredded Romano cheese. And oregano. That's going to be raining over here. So it'll taste a little more like pizza. But I thought this would be a fun spin on it. I've seen a few different people online putting it together. Giada, some different people. Um, but I thought it would be fun. I thought it would be fun to make this. And uh, I'm starving. That's another piece of this puzzle. So a friend of mine, Pete, and I were walking down the street. And I saw an advertisement in a Mexican restaurant for quesadillas. And I was looking at it from a very different standpoint, instead of it just being about what was in it, I was looking at how it was put together. So we were trying to figure out how to fold the quesadilla in a way that it looked like it did in the picture. So I think we got very close by folding all the edges inside, almost like a, what is it, a five, I'm a hexagon, right? Five points? <laughs> Pentagon, five points. I have my crew here, and they're awesome and very smart. So that's what we have right here, and I think it's going to turn out really well. But I had to have my little origami map before I get started. Okay, first things first, flour tortilla. Done. We are going to start with our vegetables. And I'm starting with my onions. And my friend Pete is a vegetarian, so we're going to start with a vegetarian option, and then we're going to add in... On the second one, some cooked, chopped up chicken. So I've been in LA for about a few days. I had the pleasure of writing a song a few months ago for the It Gets Better Project. If you remember the It Gets Better Project, it was uh, a campaign started by Dan Savage at The Stranger, who's a writer of an article called Savage Love. He's a columnist. But when a lot of kids were in the news talking about wanting to commit suicide or being very, very bullied. Nobody was speaking to them, and he decided to start this campaign where older people like myself had an opportunity to turn to younger people and say, it gets, <laughs> I'm like choking on it, it gets better. And it was a great campaign. A lot of people did it. Even the president did it, which to me is, is amazing. And really, really, really was excited to be a part of this project. So they put out a call to find original songs. So I wrote this song called 45 Degrees. And it's basically the idea of just saying, if I could just turn you 45 degrees, you would see that it does get better. You know, and it won't always feel the way that it does now. So we just added in a little oregano and our vegetables. And I'm going to top it with our cheese starting with our Romano. I love Romano cheese, just to cut to the subject matter for a second. It's very salty, 
that still has a kind of a sweet taste to it. So it's been my new favorite cheese to be throwing all over the place. So that's what that's about. And then we have our mozzarella. And then I'm going to put that on there. But back to the It Gets Better thing, they decided to do a musical and incorporated a lot of popular songs like Crazy by Niles Barkley and wrote a script that wove through all of that. And my song 45 Degrees Happens in the Middle, well, at the LA premiere, I got to come to town from Tulsa and uh, perform my song, which was awesome because the other people that were attached to the event were Dan Savage himself, which was great, Lily Tomlin, uh, Leanne Rimes put it on, and Dot Jones from Glee, who plays Coach Beast, and Jay Rodriguez, uh, which he's also on Malibu Country with Reba and Lily Tomlin. So star-studded event, something poignant, some as also a fundraiser. It was just really cool to be a part of it. Big theater, sold-out show. So that's what I spent my time doing. And why not throw a little cooking show in the middle of it all? All right, so now we have our Italian quesadilla, our vegetarian Italian quesadilla, which you can see here. I pushed everything toward the middle so we can start our Pentagon. <laughs> so I'm going to fold it in like this and then kind of go around, folding it where all points are starting to go into the center. I've only done this once before, but... That's the point of my show, Trial and Eric. It's actually, it's actually working. All right, so now everything is pushed to the middle. As you can see here, we have a nice little package quesadilla. So my instinct is to push it down as hard as I can to flatten it so it all gets cooked as evenly throughout. You don't have a big lump. What I've also learned is uh, when you put it down into the oil, which is our next step, and then it'll get it nice and crispy, and it will seal the top part of this, we're going to place it top side down, and then we'll turn it around, and then it'll cook the rest of it. And the cheese will get all nice and gooey inside, and then we'll cut it in half and show you. So the next one I'm going to do is the chicken one. Same thing, just get your favorite vegetables. I think... That's the cool thing about a quesadilla, is I think you could use, you could make a, a German quesadilla. Like you could find different, a Caribbean quesadilla. Like you can take whatever style of food you have and just kind of throw all the ingredients into here and make it your own. And that way it's this nice, simple meal with all the ingredients that you love the best. I just, I don't know. I don't know why my, I'm not Italian. I don't know why my go-to is Italian. But ever since I was a little kid, I've just, that's the food that I love. And I'm a pretty picky eater. So I've kind of just <laughs> stuck with that. Peppers and onions and tomatoes and tomato sauce. That's the other thing you can do here that I did not do. Is I think it would be really neat if you like pesto. I'm allergic to nuts, so I can't really do the whole pine nut thing. But if you made pesto without pine nuts for me, which I would love and be grateful, or you could do a nice like tomato paste. I bet you could brush it around the edges of here and then when you fold it in that gives it a little more added flavor. That way you don't have to stick to the whole cheese and, and vegetables and that's it. You can kind of throw, throw in whatever you like. So in goes more Romano. Did I tell you I like Romano cheese? And mozzarella. But this time we're throwing in chicken so I'm going to throw in a little of my chopped up chicken. Another cool thing, thanks to my friend Pete, is I was able to attend a very, very cool event, which I have never been a part of. My friend Pete does a lot of movie stuff. I won't tell you any more about him. <laughs> I'll just say that. But uh, he does a lot of movie type of stuff, and he invited me to the Directors Guild Awards Meet the Nominees where the nominees are everyone from, there are five of them, Steven Spielberg, uh, oh, what's the guy, Ang Lee, <laughs> Catherine Bigelow, Ben Affleck, and Tom Hooper, who did Les Mis. Catherine did uh, Zero Dark Thirty, Ben did Argo, 
Steven Spielberg did Lincoln and well, my miss, Ang Lee did Life of Pi, which I saw and it was amazing. I loved it. But it was cool because uh, it seemed like a very small theater, very intimate, and you got to hear these directors talk very openly and they had a great moderator and he just got all these honest answers out of them and they seemed very personable. And hearing that they all struggled, one thing they talked about was doubt, like how they all deal with doubt. And they were very honest about it. Nobody had an ego. Nobody said, I don't know anything about doubt. You know, they had their good days, they had their bad days. And a lot of, that's basically how they described it. So that was an extremely cool experience that I got to do. And while I was there, I just decided to walk up to Ben Affleck and take a picture. Or ask him to take a picture. Which I don't normally do. I'm not very fan-oriented in that way. But I have so much respect for somebody who can, is an actor and then turns around and goes behind the camera and gets the type of accolades like he won that award. It was a meet the nominees thing and then that night, last night, he won the award. Just very cool for somebody who, I don't know, doesn't, I don't think, get enough credit for what he does. Look at me sticking up for Ben Affleck. But I have to say, there's been a lot of times in my career where I have walked up to people um, that I was backstage, like musician people, and I'm not going to name names, but they were really nasty. And I was on the opposite side of the curtain. I wasn't in front of it. I wasn't a fan. I was, well, I was a fan, but I was behind the stage. You know, I was right where they were, you know, up here. And they would just be really nasty. And I thought, you know what, I am a fan of yours, and you shouldn't treat me any different than you would the people who are out there. So when I walked up to Ben, I was a little <laughs> bit nervous because you just don't know. You don't know how people are going to react. But in that setting, I thought um, he seemed like he was being jovial with other people and he seemed pretty nice. So I walked over and, of course, he was very nice to me. We took a picture. You can check it out on my Facebook. You can subscribe to it, uh, facebook.com backslash eric.hyman, H-I-M-A-N. But he was really nice, and we talked. They had been to, him and Jennifer Garner had been to Oklahoma to shoot a movie, and they were right down the street from my house at one point, and I remember a picture was circulating that they were there. And so I brought that up, and he said he had a great time in Oklahoma. And it was cool just to be, you know, go up to somebody in that, you know, fan kind of way, and then them turn around and treat you with respect. So every time somebody mentions Ben Affleck to me now, I'm going to have to say he's such a nice guy. Back to the food. All right, I did, I did it once. I think I can do it again. What do you say? What do you say? Oh, did the Ravens win? Ravens won. I'm reporting on football. I never thought I'd be doing that. The Ravens won 34 to 29. And we're in California, and you don't hear any cheering going on around. We're in downtown LA, and it is silent. <laughs> so... I didn't have any stake in it. I am in California, so I feel sorry for the people here who are rooting for the 49ers. But um, there will always be another Super Bowl, and then another one, and then another one. But right now, Italian quesadillas, and we're going back to it. So here we go. We're making our Pentagon. I should just call these uh, Italian Pentagons. All right, here we go. First one this way, and then just start folding it around. I think I filled this one too much. I don't know, is that possible? All right, folding it in, folding it in. I wish I had some tape, because at this point I'm just trusting the oil. All right, so this one is our chicken. Here is our, I'm gonna do a little, little notch in here, making a V for vegetarian, so I can tell the difference. Not that they're not, <laughs> like, can you tell which one's bigger? I don't know. <laughs> All right. So next thing is I'm just going to put a little bit of salt and pepper on it, just on the outside. Kind of put that down there. So when it goes in, just a little sprinkle. We have some ground white pepper because Pete has it in his kitchen. And it's all about working with what you got. All right. So we have our ingredients over here. I'm going to turn you. You don't have to do anything. You just sit there. I'm going to turn you this way. If I could turn you just 45 degrees, which is exactly what I just did, and plugged the song 45 Degrees from the It Gets Better Project musical in the same breath. 
How good is that? I don't even need a PR person. All right. So here we have our quesadillas. Again, can you tell which one is the one I'm going to eat? <laughs> it's like double the size. All right. So just checking on here. <clears throat> la, 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 la. I'm not doing any singing later. I'm just doing that for fun. Okay. So we have in a pan right here, I have taken the liberty of putting some olive oil in here. And I threw in some garlic earlier just to give the oil that garlic flavor, and then I pulled out all the garlic. So that way it's incorporated in there without it, the garlic cooking too long and burning, and burning right into our quesadillas, which is yuck. We don't want that. All right. The other fun part of my cooking show and getting to travel around like this is cooking in other people's kitchens, which I do quite often, because now that I have my own little cooking show and I tout it around, everybody wants me to cook for them, which is, for me, it's awesome, because I love to do it. It makes me feel more like at home. Uh, but it's funny to me, because you just never know somebody else's kitchen. Like, you know, when you're at home, it's easy. Things happen a lot quicker. But when you're in somebody else's space, you need a minute to kind of figure out where everything is. But I have to say, in this case, my friend Pete has an amazing kitchen. Not only is it beautiful, but it's very easy to find everything. I found myself opening drawers being like, oh, there it is. All right, so next step. We have our oil right here. I am going to put it on medium-low. And bring our oil, because we've already used this oil to cook the garlic. I'm going to bring it up slowly. Just put it on medium for a second to when it starts getting nice and hot. And then again, we are placing, and I'll start with this one, we are placing the folded side down and it will end up, the oil will end up sealing it and making it beautiful. I'm really glad that, that Pete and I passed that store, <laughs> that Mexican restaurant on the way here or else I think my initial reaction, because I haven't really done this much before, making quesadillas, my thing would have been to just make one flat one, and then I, I think I've seen somebody else do this before too. My instinct was to make, a, make it flat like this, and then put all the ingredients on there, and then turn around with another one, and just throw that on top, and then throw that in the pan, and it would just cook by itself, and then do that again. But this way looks a lot fancier and is really going to impress people when you make them your Italian quesadillas or your German quesadillas or your Hungarian quesadillas or your Mexican quesadillas. All right, so here we go into the pan. Is it warm? Another thing you can always do is take a little piece of one of these and throw it in. And if it starts bubbling around it, you are good. Not yet. Did I mention that I met Ben Affleck this week? <laughs> okay, I'm trying to think of other eventful things. Oh, another thing that I've never done while being in LA is I've taken every, almost every form of transportation in this town. And I have to say, I ended up exactly where I was supposed to and alive. So, you have that. I took the bus, and that was a fun experience, and then I started taking the metro, and now taxis, and I took a plane to get here. So I'm going to write a song about that, because that's another thing I do besides, you know, this whole cooking thing. All right. We got bubbling. Our oil's good. Keeping it at medium high. We are going to throw it into the fire. I mean the oil. In it goes. One, two, three. Get that nice and cooked. I thought it would probably be best to use tongs to move these. I don't know how you would. Sometimes maybe, I guess, like a spatula would probably be best. But for this, I came armed with both. So we are all good. I have to say that I used half an onion, which is good. I think... For probably, I would say, half an onion, one bell pepper, as I'm going through my recipe, two small tomatoes, a package of 
flour tortillas. I used half of a um, tiny block of Romano cheese. Probably about, I would say this is probably two cups. And then probably two cups worth of cheese. And I think I bought a package of eight. I think it would go enough for all eight. So the serving size is one, <laughs> I don't know, depending upon how many of these things you can eat, I probably could eat eight. So we got it nice and boiling. I'll show you that real fast. It's in there just flat like that. Sizzling all nice. When it gets nice and brown on one side, then we're going to turn around and flip it over. This is a perfect, quick, 30-minute, not even 30-minute meal. It is so fast and enjoyable, and it has all the ingredients that you would have in, I guess, for this, a pizza, but a lot quicker. And one cool thing I'm going to try to do is chop up one of these flour tortillas at one point, throw them in some oil. I know it's oil. It's not the best for you, but I'm going to try to make my own pita chips. I think that would be a lot of fun. But for now... This is boiling, boiling, bubbling, and I'm just going to see if it's nice and brown. Push it down there. Needs a little more time. But I'm trying to think of other things that I've done in LA. I'm doing a show on Tuesday at Genghis Cohen. If you are in LA, please, 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 please come out. It's at 7.30. And then I am going to be in Fort Lauderdale next Friday. I feel like the Bill Maher show, like when at the end of Bill Maher, he's like, I'm going to be on Saturday. I'll be at the blah, blah, blah theater. I'll be next Friday. I'll be at Bill's in Fort Lauderdale. And then the following week, I start my Under the Ink DVD tour, which is going to be really fun, where I'm going all over the East Coast, starting with Oklahoma City, in the Midwest, going up to Kansas City, and then I'm over to Louisville, Columbus, Pittsburgh, Penn State, Philadelphia, New York, Boston, down to D.C., and then Richmond, Virginia, Norfolk, Raleigh, North Carolina, going over to Atlanta, Destin, Florida, which is where I grew up, and from Destin, Monroe, Louisiana, at Club Pink, which I love that spot. Big shout out to them back home, and then coming out to the West. So it's a big, long month tour. I'm really, really, really excited. Please come out. I'll probably do one of my other cooking shows from another different destination. Maybe I'll do Boston, and maybe we'll make some clam chowder. All right, checking back with this. It's nice and good. It is sealed. I was, I was a little nervous that wasn't going to happen. But it worked. All right. Nice and sealed. Look at that. Other side. Perfection. Nice and brown. Our little pockets. All right. Well, we have five more minutes. I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in. I wonder what I should make next time. I think I've jaunted around. Last time I made meatballs, I think... There is a little bit of an Italian theme. Maybe I should try a different thing. But for now, I think we'll be good. Usually I have somebody play a song. But since this was a Super Bowl, <laughs> everybody was busy. <laughs> but myself. Um, I have my music up on iTunes if you are new to the show. Uh, you can check some of that out. I've been a singer-songwriter for about 11, 12 years just been traveling the country over and over. You can hear my music on Sirius XM as well. If you check out the coffee house. It's funny to me whenever I meet somebody who, who's like, I heard you on Sirius XM the coffee house. And I don't have Sirius XM myself anymore. Uh, so it's funny. I never know when they're playing it. But they're still playing it. So life is still working out very well. Hey, Enzo Fiorello. Just giving you a shout out. You are awesome. Thanks so much for watching. Um, we have a few more minutes. I think ev now that the game is over, we're going to get start getting some people in here on the tail end. All right. So our quesadilla is done. Just going to grab a plate real fast and start serving. I was even impressed with how easy this is.
Some of these trial and errors, I feel like the pressure, at one point I should be starting a fire by accident. Not in here, and not to scare Pete, <laughs> but trial and error, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but today, we win. Somebody's throwing, I can hear somebody in the other apartment probably throwing stuff all around because they were rooting for the 49ers. It's going to be okay. Look at that. Nice. That turned out really well. And you know what? Just for fun and because I'm excited, I'm going to sprinkle it with a little bit of extra oregano. Voila. Nice and pretty. Here we go. And we're plating it. Voila. We have our lovely vegetarian quesadilla. Perfect. <laughs> you didn't miss much. I should perform the Super Bowl halftime show next year. I'm on it. You tell Beyonce to get the hell off the stage because I'm going to be there next year performing my face off. And you know what? I don't care who lip syncs or who doesn't, but you know what? I don't lip sync. You get live performing. And again, I'll be live singing, no lip syncing, all over the country between next Tuesday, LA, Friday, Bills in Fort Lauderdale, and then all over the country starting on February 15th. So please check in. Her performance was meh. Okay. I didn't miss anything. But you know what? I'll probably do what everybody else is doing that didn't watch it, and I'm going to go find it on YouTube and see, because I'm sure everybody's going to be talking about Beyonce's performance. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to start this next one, put it into the oil, get it all nice and good. I'll be back probably uh, at the end of the month, and maybe I'll be reporting from Boston. Totally different feel, but a lot of, a lot of fun. So, yay, Ravens! <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Eric Hyman, and this is Trial and Eric.